The Holy Land is the most special sacred place on earth. This is where Jesus was born, where he walked, where he preached and taught, where he performed miracles. This is where he was crucified, died, and was buried. And this is where he was resurrected. This is where it all happened. And this is where the Equestrian Order is making a big difference. And when the Knights and Ladies comes for a visit, they get to see the first hand, the project they're supporting, and the most important is the Bethlehem University. My name is Zerul Al Shomali. I'm a student in Bethlehem University, and I'm a Christian living in a holy land. This university rep represents hope, represents education, knowledge, and love. It does not only teach me novels and the genre and colonialism, it also taught me how to live as a Christian and as a Palestinian. So everything that I, that I do here can affect the people around me. And, and being a young Christian lady living in the Holy Land gives me a privilege uh, to do so because I come from the land where Jesus was born. And with this faith and with this religion, I can inspire uh, other young uh, students like myself. It's very important for the members of the Christian order to come and see the good works, but also it is so important for them to experience the Holy Land. You will visit the Church of the Annunciation. This is where Our Lady have lived in a humble grotto where the angel of the Lord came to tell her, you'll bear a son and you're gonna name him Emmanuel. Such a wonderful, touchy place where you would sense the Blessed Mother there next to you as you pray the rosary. Another important sacred place is the Church of the Nativity, where our Lord was born. Church of the Nativity is the second oldest church in the world, still standing from 537 AD by a miracle. That's where Jesus was born. This is where the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, the pilgrims would come down in tears to touch that very spot where Our Lady gave birth to Jesus. After the birth of our Lord, they went to Egypt and they came to Nazareth to live in a cave, in a house. St. Joseph Church is built in Nazareth over the very house where the Holy Family have lived. At the beginning of the public ministry of our Lord, he was invited to a wedding in Cana. That's where he performed his first miracle. And there where we bring our groups, the married couples will rule the vows. All the days of my life. Well, we've only been married 23 years, so we're still kind of newlyweds. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was great. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's always good to focus back on um, why, you, why you love the one you love, why you did what you did, why you're making life together. We were looking into each other's eyes. We have spent a lifetime together. It was deeply meaningful for us. We ended up putting our foreheads together and I'm watching the tears go down her eyes. And it was, again, like so many aspects of this trip, just deeply moving for me. So it was very, very special. It's amazing. It's really amazing, especially when we meet couples that are 50 years being married or 30 years or 20 years. It feels like they are really ready for a honeymoon. <laughs> My first Jesus moment on this trip was in the Sea of Galilee because I could look out and there weren't a lot of buildings, there were hills, and I could visualize that I was looking at what Jesus looked at. We have the synagogue where he stood and taught. We have the remains of the house of St. Peter, the Prince of Apostles, where he stayed and lived for three years, most likely with our Blessed Mother. From that beach, he called his apostles. There, he, he taught, preached, performed so many miracles. That's where he told them, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you want to inherit the kingdom of God. One of the most beautiful places we see by the Sea of Galilee where our Lord started his public ministry is the Mount of Beatitudes, where our Lord gave us 
the way of life, to live on earth in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Basically, there's five pages of my little Bible with him talking nonstop uh, and ta teaching us how to live. To sit there and read that in that place, in that setting, it was uh, very powerful for me. The upper room is built on the location where our Lord had his last supper and instituted the Eucharist for us. This is where the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles. That is the spot of the first church on earth. And from there, the church went to the whole world. After the Last Supper of the Lord Jesus, as we read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18, he went down to the Garden of Gethsemane, where on this very rock we, we always celebrate Mass. It feels heavenly for every pilgrim after receiving the Eucharist to kneel and touch the very rock where our Lord sweat turned into blood and dropped on that sacred rock. I just, it's like I could, I could see him and I could feel, feel what he must have been feeling. And it was just so powerful. From the Garden of Gethsemane, our Lord was taken to the house of Caiaphas, where he was tried, where he was put in the very dungeon that we as pilgrims goes down to experience and feel some of our Lord's agony. We do the stations of the cross, of what we call it, the Via de la Rosa. They walk and experience the market streets of Jerusalem, walking the same path from the Antonius Fortress to the hill of Calvary, where our Lord died on the cross. We learn the torment that Jesus had gone through, but to be on the spot where he was and to have the, the feelings, I mean, the tears were flowing down people's faces just knowing that we were on the same spot as he was. And pilgrims, they go up to the hill of Calvary inside the Holy Sepulchre Church, and they put their hand in a hole where they can actually touch the rock where our Lord died on, on the cross and shed his precious blood to unlock heaven for us. To have the honor to actually touch that, uh, it, it was quite moving, quite moving. One of the privileges for the Equestrian Order members when they come on the pilgrims, they participate in the procession to go into the empty tomb where words are said welcoming the members and three at a time will go to experience and be inside the tomb and touch the spot where our Lord was resurrected from. I'm not Mr. Emotional, but that did it for me. Um, it was moving, um, moving beyond words really. We did a high mass with the monks and I got to do the reading and I've read the Bible my whole life. I've listened to scripture my whole life. I have never felt the Bible. I've never felt scripture like I felt it this morning. It, it was probably the most moving thing I've ever done in my whole life. All of this, you're gonna find it in one place. It's the Holy Land. Find a reason to come to the Holy Land is to support your Christian brothers and sisters in the faith. They are really suffering here and they need your support. It is difficult to live here in the Holy Land, working in the streets, seeing checkpoints, seeing the separation wall. My brother had a bone cancer. It was a very rare uh, case that he needed to take chemotherapy inside Jerusalem. You know, people who live in the West Bank, they are not allowed to go inside Jerusalem unless they have a permission. And as Christians, they don't give us a permission unless it's Christmas time or Easter time. They only give uh, the medical permission to the patient and another one a person from the family. No, I didn't get the chance to say the last goodbye. It's really a hard thing to, uh, to experience at my age. Um, well, it was, it was hard for my parents uh, to say goodbye to their son. Um, 
sorry. We are being mistreated here right in the heart of where Jesus Christ born and lived. It's, hor it's horrible what you see here in their persecution and to know that they're going through the things from the, you know, that Christians have gone through for so many years and it's still going on. I lived all my life knowing that we're occupied, that we live in a very difficult situation. But of course, on the other side, uh, we're, the son, we're the sons of hope and love. So we still see uh, this small light in our, li in our lives. And I really um, invite people to come, to come home, because that's their spiritual birthplace. It will change me. I think I'll have a better understanding, a better meaning, a fuller picture, and hopefully uh, make me a better person for Christ. And I, I know that this has changed my life, and I wish I had done it sooner. This really gave me a better appreciation for what I still need to do for Christ. And there's no place on the planet where that takes on a deeper spiritual and emotional perspective than right here in the Holy Land.